Hello and welcome to Saving Data in iOS Apps, where we're going to be covering Core Data and Realm. The whole gist of this class is you want to make some apps that can save some data, whether it's going to be a to-do list app or maybe a game that keeps track of a high score, whatever it is. If you have an app that can't save any information, it's going to be a pretty boring app. So we're going to dive into all the different ways that you can do that and especially covering core data. This is a key feature that you need to learn if you want to be a successful iOS developer, especially if you want a job as an iOS developer. This is a big thing that employers look for. So before we go ahead and talk about the course, let me give you a quick introduction to myself. My name is Nick Walter. I've been an iOS developer for over five years and I've have a couple apps in the App Store and combined they have over hundreds and thousands of app downloads. So this ain't my first rodeo. I love the app world. I got into it because I got my very first iPhone was an iPhone 4 and it just blew my socks off. Like the things that these apps could do, it just absolutely blew my mind. Like the one that really sticks out for whatever reason was a Scrabble dictionary. I just thought, what? Scrabble released a dictionary to look up words? Like that's the coolest thing in the world. You know, still didn't change the fact that grandma always kicks my butt in that game, but whatever. I've been teaching since 2014. I've taught over 60,000 students how to code. That number's more around the 70,000 figure, but it's growing and I love it. I love teaching others how to code. And as it says on the screen here, I love Swift. Swift was released back in 2014 and I just think it is a great way to code. Before then, you had to use Objective-C to make apps and I just think the game has completely changed. It's much more open and the code is just more fun to write. So been really excited and charged up ever since Swift came out. So let me go ahead and give you a course overview of what it is that we're going to be tackling here in this course. So the first thing that we're going to dive into is the core data fundamentals. You know, what is core data? I'll tell you right now, it's a framework by Apple in, that allows us to save data in a very simple way, but this is absolutely essential for you to take the next step as an iOS developer. Like I said, employers look for this, and if you want to have really powerful apps that are saving lots of pieces of information, you need to get a good grip on core data. So we're going to start by just learning the fundamentals. You know, how do you add core data to a project? How do you save things in there, take them out? Just very, very simple, basic stuff. Then we're going to move on to creating a to-do list app. So the idea here, a very simple to-do list app where you can mark down things that you need to do, and then you can check them off your list. You can also delete things. But we want to go ahead and make an app that sort of shows a real world example of using core data. This will allow us to stretch our knowledge and find all the bits and pieces that we need in order to make a great app. Then we're going to finish up with a section on Realm. Now Realm is another way to store data on iOS. It's in fact a open source third party database that has been created. And so this is not affiliated with Apple, but they've made it so easy to work with. And in my opinion, Realm is much simpler to work with than with core data. And by using the two, I think you'll kind of see the pros and cons between them. There's definitely situations when you would want core data and some when you would want Realm. And so, you know, going through this process, you'll get to see both sides. And I think you'll be much more confident as a developer. So what are the prerequisites for this course? Well, you need to have a Mac computer. There are some hacks out there to maybe run like a virtual machine or a Mac in the cloud. Those can be pretty tricky. I really recommend that you have a Mac computer and then you need to have the latest version of Xcode. So right now that's Xcode 9. You know, it might update to have future versions. Just make sure you have the latest versions of Xcode and that is a free program by Apple. I'm going to show you how to download it. So no worries if you don't have that on your computer yet. And I just want to tell you that you can do this. You know, I am someone who's very inspired by teaching others. I slammed my head against the wall for years trying to learn how to code, and I felt like no one really ever connected with me. So I want to be the teacher that helps you get to that next step and explains this in a simple way for you to move forward. So enough of all this rah-rah talk. How about we just go ahead and dive into it first by learning about core data.